It's a promise of a redeemer. The only reason why we have good people in the world from now until Christ is because of divine grace. God is giving grace in advance in lieu of this coming Messiah to prepare a people to receive this Messiah. So for many thousands of years, you know some of the greatest people. Abraham, Moses, the prophets, starting with Elijah, all the holy men and women of the Old Testament. There's only holiness there in this age of Lucifer's dominion over humanity because of God's un, uh, graciousness, unmerited graciousness, where he's giving divine grace in advance to prepare people for this Messiah to come. Now, there are various theories here about the Messiah. I won't look at Jewish theories. I'll look at Christian theories. The Jewish theories are multiple because they had various understa different understandings of what the Messiah would be. There was no one single Jewish theory that the Messiah would be God-man. If there were people who believed that, they were the distinct minority. The general predominant Jewish view about the Messiah is that he was just going to be a glorious king-like figure, a man, a great man, but just a man who would be a king-like figure, warrior figure, who would drive out the Romans and all pagan influence, would exalt Israel above all the other nations, and that Yahweh would convert all the other nations to Israel, this exalted Israel that would have dominion over the world until the end of the world, and this Messiah figure will remain untouched until the end of the world. That was a predominant Jewish view about the Messiah. That's why you read in Scripture at one point when Jesus is talking about, when I am lifted up, this is John 12, 32, when I am lifted up, I shall draw all men to myself. And some of the Jews respond by saying, what do you mean by lifted up? Isn't the Messiah supposed to be undisturbed? That is, to reign undisturbed to the end of the world. So when this humble Jesus of Nazareth comes along, he's only 30 years of age, which was not an age where you, you earned respect in Jewish culture. You know, you considered old and venerable when you were 50 plus. Jesus was young from Nazareth, that's Hickville. You know, who cares about Nazareth? Nothing good comes out of Nazareth. That's, what, that's in the first chapter of St. John's Gospel. Nothing is expected good to come out of Nazareth. You're only 30 years old. You're not supposed to read and write. You never enrolled in any of the rabbinical schools. You know, and you're coming to Jerusalem on a donkey. <laughs> Sorry, that's not our version of the Messiah. You don't have, any, you don't have any, any arms or great wealth or legions of soldiers behind you to back us up. And you're telling us to pay taxes to Caesar. Where's the great overthrow? And you're talking to women and you're talking to Samaritans. You know, <laughs> this is, oh no, we don't want this man as our Messiah. All right. But uh, with respect to different Christian views about whether the Messiah would ever have come, there are two schools of thought here. The predominant view, we call, say, the Dominican view, is that Jesus only came into the world because of original sin. Jesus came as a Messiah stroke redeemer to save humanity, to restore humanity back into friendship with God, to save humanity so that humanity can once again have its eternal destiny beatific vision, life with God. As the prayer goes in the liturgy, our happy fault who gave us so wonderful a deliverer. In other words, oh, original sin, as bad as it is, in, in a sense, how wonderful it is. Because of original sin, we got this superb Messiah, this God-man, Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for original sin, we would have never have had this Messiah figure. So in a sense, it is a happy fault. And you can say that because God is the only one who can always take good out of evil. If you want to understand...